Hi guys, I hope you're all having a good day. A little spot here on this book. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a bit of coloring in this book, The Ink Outs by Rory Dobner. And uh, we, well I did a um, picture in here last night. <clears throat> I was doodling around and um, doing some distress ink on here. And since there's a picture in here of this little section of the house close up with a little fox in it. And uh, since I know all the colors I used in here and want to use them again, I'm going to go ahead and color in the fox page here. Which is, <clears throat> excuse me, the same colors I used in the, uh, the house drawing I did. I think I'm going to need a clip to hold that page down. So we'll just clip it here. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the fox is something that wasn't in the other house, but all the plants, and this is the front porch with the same trees and everything coming down. And I painted it in with all the distress inks. And I've had a few questions on um, how I use these as watercolors. So I thought I'd do a video on it and get this page done anyway. So the first off is I picked out uh, certain colors to go with the um, background or the walls or whatever you want to call it along with the little foxy guy here. This is the um, bendable cutting mats you can get at the dollar store in the kitchen section. One side is shiny and the other side is rough and I'm going to be using the rough side to lay down the ink on. I'll be using my Pentel water brush um, to pick the ink up and paint with it. I also have five, <laughs> no four, I'm sorry, four Faber-Castell polychromos um, to do some depth work, I guess, deepening the lines behind here. And these match the colors that I'm using. So the green one is green yellowish 168. Then we have a raw umber that's 100. We have Van Dyke Brown, which is 167. And we have dark red 225. Okay, the green goes with the peeled paint. The browns go with the two tones of brown here, which is Vintage Photo and Walnut Stain, respectively light and dark. <laughs> the dark red goes with the mahogany. There's some brick work back here, and that's what I used to do the brick on the other house, along with a tiny bit of the spiced marmalade to give it um, some texture so you weren't looking at just plain bright red brick. Okay, so pencils I'm going to use last. I'm going to go ahead and lay some ink down and I'm going to go on the background first so we need the background colors. All I do is take the ink pad and smush it onto the plastic pad here just so I get some color down and I'll take the mahogany that's the spiced um, marmalade and if I can get this one out I'll get some of that down oh. there we go so I'll start with those two first and all I do to activate those is use the water brush and put a little water into it and I kind of mix these two a little bit and then we'll just go in to the brickwork. Now the um, distress inks will dry a little lighter than when you originally put them down and you can move them around a little bit. I want variations of color. I'm assuming that's a rose of some sort. So kind of dark along the um, roof line and then 
just kind of bring it in to the rest of the brick. Anywhere that it's darker, you want to stick some color in there. I'm not sure how far this brick goes, but we're going to pretend it goes all the way over there. <laughs> going to add a little of the um, marmalade in here too and just get it pretty wet there. And we'll see how that dries. Anywhere else there's brick, we'll do the same exact thing. Darkest with the dark shadows. And I'm going to put a lot of water on there and just bring it across. And it looks to be brick here too. So we're going to add some of that in. some over here on the side. Just take it up to the top. Some kind of foliage over here. Not quite sure what it is. Okay. And that's all I'm doing. Just laying in some brick. I'm going to throw some brown in here a little later. Okay. And then we'll just, on the same pad, I'll wipe up the little bit down here. I'm going to put the browns in. So I have to remember what I'm doing here. This is the vintage photo. And that is the walnut. And while we're here, we're going to throw in the green. The green is peeled pink. Okay, so what I did was watered down this vintage photo pretty well and used it kind of as a um, whitewashing effect to the front of the porch in the darker areas. We'll put a little of the walnut. Everything else just kind of gets a little wash of the vintage photo in it. Whoops, wrong color. <laughs> going around the bricks here. Got some cracks in there too. And then anywhere there's a dark shadow we just kind of add a little more and pull it out when we're getting into another area. I'm going to add that right over that leaf. It's okay. It can have a little brown in it. Got a little too much water on there. I'm just going to dry it up. Oop, put a little red in that one. And then down here.
working on the brickwork, we're just going to go across down it. I'm going to go in with the pencil and add details of some moss and then the cracks and stuff. So just kind of following what we already got down here. Tree's going to be brown, so it's okay if a little of this gets into the tree. Okay. Kind of hoping you're getting all this. I have the camera far up and they can't see what's going on in there. Darken those up a little bit. The nice thing about working with the um, Distress inks, the clip is not holding this paper very well, is it? They dry pretty quick. some blocks over here too. You can re-wet um, the Distress ink like uh, you do with watercolors. It doesn't blend quite as well because it's ink, but and you don't want to scrub too much on your paper, but it will activate it again. Okay, so there's a few places we want to add um, some of the green. So I just pick up some of the green on the brush and kind of like add um, some moss areas in here. It's kind of like where the lines would be and moss would grow and maybe down these little things here. Wherever there's a crack, you might want to throw some in. Just add some lines on your own. And that's how I got that effect. And basically, if it's an older um, house, you're going to have like little bits of moss growing. Especially if you've got little critters living in your house. <laughs> so I kind of put it here and there and everywhere. Especially in the walkway down here where there's vegetation. And the little grasses are going to get some of that too.
just get some green going in here. So I just take the um, peeled paint, sometimes I put it down thicker, and then I just add some water into it, and it thins it out. If I want it really dark, I'll add some of the brown to it. Right now we're just doing the grass, so I'm just going to keep it this one color. But like these dark leaves up here, I'll take some of the... Am I even in focus? I have to keep checking. Um, this is the walnut stain, and I'll just add it in with the green, and then we'll do these leaves. And there's a leaf down there. And then if we want any of these darker, we can just put a little bit of that in there too and just spread it around right down where the veins are or where it overlaps the other one. Okay, grass greenery on the other side. Yeah, we can throw a little of the dark brown in the darker areas too. Okay, now between the two browns I have, we're going to color in the tree trunk. So this is the vintage photo first. And there's a big one down here. Okay, then you go in with the uh, darker color. Do like where the uh, tree bends, buckles, and where the darkest shadowing is. Just use the artist lines on it. And bring it up. There's a little brickwork down here, so we'll throw some of that red in there, along with a little of the green. Tone it down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more of the vintage photo um, up on the top. Up here, it's really watered down, so it's just kind of giving it a beige look instead of white. I'm going to bring it over to the window over here. I'll try to lighten up that red a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bright. There we go. Just add some of the brown right over it. That's the vintage photo. And down in here too. And there's a tree trunk here. So we'll get that too. Boom. Okay, I am gonna have to let this dry a little bit. And then I'll work on some of the roses. We're going to do those <coughs> in aged mahogany and maybe bring in some uh, pink. And then we will tackle the little little dude here. Does he have a name? A Freddy Foxglove. <laughs> so I will let this dry and I will come back and we will do Freddy and the rest of the picture. 
and see you in a bit. Okay, we're pretty much dry and we're gonna work here on Freddy. <laughs> cool name. I need to put a little more of the um, vintage photo down here because I used a lot of it. So, he is a obvious fox. I mean, it says over here, first to arrive always, the frightful fancy Freddy Foxglove, who dons his favorite outfit and assumes the role of master of the house, ready to welcome guests, as word quickly spreads that the fun is about to begin. Animals great and small arrive from near and far. So, as a greeter of the house, he's all dapper. And we're going to put uh, some color on him. A little vintage photo coming down a little bit on his nosy. And up. Lighter up on his forehead. We want to make it darkest around his eyes and his ears. Under his chin. And very lightly bring it down. He'll have to have a little color in where it should be white. Just because I don't have a white distress ink. I mean I do, but it's not a... It's called Picket Fence. And it's really opaque and I don't want to use that. <laughs> so I'll give him his tail with a white tip. A little darker around his jacket area, which I have to figure out what color I want to do his jacket in. I think his cat, uh, pack, uh, pants can be khaki, so I'm going to mix a little of the uh, vintage photo with the peeled paint and get kind of a green khaki going. And we'll add that down here. So we'll have a greenish hue. darker down in the shadowed areas. Just adding a little more brown to it. Okay, his feet also need to be darkened here. There we go, pretty quick. I'm going to put a little of the walnut around his eyes just to darken them up a little bit. on the top of his ears. His little nose. And his mouth down here. A little extra shadow on this side of his face. Alright. Now his jacket. Oh, he's got a little rose. Um, being the fashionable man he is, he can have... Um, hmm. I don't think I have a blue in here. I don't want to give him a brown jacket that's way too much brown. So I'm going to have to figure out something in 
do an outliner pencil blue because I want them to have a blue jacket so I will be right back I have to get a blue ink okay I got some blue stormy skies it's gonna be a dark I'm crossing my fingers it's gonna be a dark blue darker than the other blues I have <laughs> And it's not dark enough we'll add some of the walnut stain to it in fact I'm gonna go ahead and do that now all right darkest areas first The belts. He's got his little pocket watch. And he has a ascot on here too. I wonder what color I should make that. <laughs> and he's got sashes, so I'm gonna do the sashes in a red pink tone. Why not? Put a little of the Victorian velvet ink down on here. Gonna add some of that to the mahogany. And we'll get a nice dark reddish color going here. And we'll add that. down his sashes too. I'll darken that up a little bit with a little bit of the brown. It's a fun thing I have with the inks is I just mess with the colors until I get one I like. <laughs> just turn them a little browner. Okay, pull a little of that up. Okay, a little of this up too. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now for the roses, we have a whole bunch of them up here. This whole stuff that's growing up on the sides. So I'm gonna just take the Victorian velvet and kind of go over them. Give them a pinkish hue. Just trying to find the flowers, not the leaves. Our buds up there. Leaves, leaves, leaves. <laughs> We're going to add some of this on this uh, flowery stock thing here. Just add some pink in there. some darker color just to give it a highlight okay um, this big old plant up here I did in the um, peeled paint so we'll add that in And that can 
kind of smear it around because I did. Oh, we got a nice crack there. Didn't even see that. We'll darken that up. Put some other color. <laughs> As, since I put moss on all the other things, I can kind of be a little more liberal with my coloring here. Just kind of add it in. And then we have these little whatever these are fluffles we'll put some pink on those too just to bring down some of that pink okay I'm going to put some of green up on the leaves up here and some of Bo's head here. Sorry, just playing around with the colors. And we have some leaves here. And this stuff up here has got to have some kind of color. window over here and then some of the brown real lightly kind of go over it to where any place that has bright white. I just don't want to see the bright white because we're an old building. Okay. Green down here. Basically, that is all the inking we're going to do. Oh, I forgot his little rose up here. Let's see, his rose is going to have to be a little darker. And we can add some of the darkness uh, from the mahogany into the roses up here, too. If you put a lot of water in that, because the page is wet, it'll blend in a little better. I'm just giving it some darker color in there. So each rose I colored, I'll just go in and add a little bit of that in there. We've got yellow in there. <laughs> Okay, and he needs some green leaves on his. Boom, boom, boom. There. Well, and there's a little green thing there. Okay, lots of little details. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and let that dry, and then we're going to come in with the um, pencils and add any definition that we need to. And remember, it's just the four 
polychromos and they again are the Van Dyke Brown, the Raw Umber, the Dark Red, and um, Green and Yellow, which really isn't that green or yellow. So let's see if I have a dry section here. It's pretty dry down here, so we'll go in with the um, yellowish green. And I'm just going to add in anywhere I didn't get um, the, what are these, like fronds of something or <laughs> grass leaves or, so we're just going to touch up any areas and if I want a darker spot I'll just press harder on them. The stems can have a little green in them any of the flowers that need it so we just kind of go around and if I want some depth in there I'll just add a little bit especially around the um, house area here so I just kind of go around and darken where I think it needs to be darkened or add it where I think I didn't get too much of the color and this just gives it another Um, dimension of depth, depth. I can't talk this morning. I didn't have enough tea. <laughs> Seems like those didn't get colored at all, so I'll just color them in with this and any of these dark areas. So yeah, that's all I do with these is just add in some color. The brown that I picked is a really good uh, brown to go with the vintage photo. And anywhere I didn't get it or anywhere I want darker, I can just add that in. see up there so then I darken all the shadowy areas detail work with these. It's a lot of playing that way and you can do it up on the bricks also just add a little go right over the lines add a little depth in those you can put cracks in here if you want uh, going down the side you can darken it if you think it's too red you can go right over it and darken it up with the brown so you just play with it until you are happy. And that's all I did with the um, house. Just went through it. Did the touch-ups with the pencils. And that is a cool crack. I want to help that out a little. <laughs> The tree will be done the same way. Any area that you want darker, you just add the pencil into. You 
the uh, colors I picked are just enough off where you can get a really good um, this is the uh, Van Dyke one coloring on the tree trunks and then you can go over it with the um, spiced marmalade and highlight to any areas but like the tree trunk down here I didn't get terribly well with the ink so we we'll just go over it with colored pencils and then if you want to you can add some dimension into your little flat flowers here darken them up at the bottom you can even add a little more dimension to his sash work and we do have to color in his belt so I'm just going to do that with the uh, raw umber try not to get his pocket watch or his buckle want the buckle done in a different color and then if I need to um, accent any other areas on his fur I would do that now too So I'll just keep playing with it like this and then I will um, show you a finished picture at the end of the video. So this whole book is going to be done in ink, <laughs> the ink house. find this really fun and relaxing just to get out the distress inks and color a page like that. I know it's not for everybody, but I enjoy it. <laughs> we'll add a little of the green in to the building too here. this we can draw little lines in here too. Put a little extra moss growing here and there. Just wherever you feel like it. Anyway, I will uh, finish this up. It's just a lot of the little details adding in shadows. I probably already said that. So I will show you again the um, picture at the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. Hope that kind of uh, helped answer any questions about how I paint with the Distress Ink. It's another use for those distress inks that I have sitting around on my desk. And as always, if you're going to try this uh, technique, could you please do yourself a favor and try it on a test page first in the back of the book or a page you don't care for that much, just to make sure that uh, you understand what the ink is going to do on the paper. It does not bleed through 
it's uh, distress ink so there is no bleed through on the back of the uh, other side here so there's some crinkling going on but I will show you the picture I did um, here with Francisco <laughs> the frog and he, he prefers listening to his fantastic frog chorus on his radio music he croaks and should be left to his professionals anyway so there's not much crinkling that goes on after the page dries completely and this was all done the same way with the painting of the ink and then a um, background and everything and then you just close the book and all I do is uh, put another book on top of this. I do not need to iron this out because this paper will just come back to basically a nice flat sheet for you to color on the other side with. There's Reggie. <laughs> this book is fun to read too. So basically, I will close this book up after I'm done giving him a little more dimension in his house and uh, the curling effect here will go away. But there is Freddy Foxglove. He does look damp. I'm going to put a little uh, shading in on his buckle with some black. Try to make it look a little silver. I do have a silver pen here. Pencil. Maybe we'll try that. That's a Prisma color. And his watch can have a little silver on it. I don't know. It'll work. It's not white anymore. That's a good thing. Okay, so I'll show you the ending picture. And uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like these kind of videos, hit the subscribe button. If you uh, want to have notifications, hit the little bell. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye now.